This is going to be a long one. <laughs> Time codes in the description so you can watch in any order you like. We begin with the SH Monster Arts Godzillas, which are actually my first SH Monster Arts figures. These things are known to be overpriced, so I wanted my first time to be special. Heh. I'm very fortunate to have found three of these for the fair enough price. Now before I dig into these figures, I actually want to talk about their movie they're from. Shin Godzilla is the 31st film in the Godzilla franchise directed by Hideaki Anno, who you may recognize as the guy who created Neon Genesis Evangelion. And if you don't know what that is, let me sum it up for you. Did you get all that? Anyway, Shin Godzilla focuses on the Japanese government and their struggle to deal with the threat at hand. The threat at hand being Godzilla himself. The movie is shot like a comprehensive news coverage, which, back when it was released, had people criticizing it for that reason, but that was the entire point of it. Though I think they did it a little too much. I swear, everyone, everything, and every single location was named, and I don't remember a single one. <laughs> but what I do remember was Godzilla himself, and my god, Zilla. What an interpretation of our favorite kaiju. Which brings me to the review. And in the movie, Godzilla progressively evolves into a bigger and bigger monstrosity. So let's start small. <laughs> Kamatakun here is Godzilla's second form. You might be asking, what's his first form? Well, we don't see that in the movie apart from a tail. What we do see is this abomination that comes after a funny moment from the movie where the Prime Minister was like, Don't worry guys, it can't come on land, it'll collapse on its own body weight. <laughs> Every scene with Kamarakun makes me shiver in disgust. His design is so grotesque that you can literally see the poor bastard suffering with every step that it takes. Blood pouring out of his gills and everything. He can't even breathe properly. I think this figure does the design justice. Almost every detail is replicated perfectly. Those beady soulless eyes, the bloody gills, and the dorsal fins are all precisely sculpted. Through this figure, I actually noticed some details that I didn't even notice in the movie, such as these disgusting holes in his thighs. Fuck, that's some trypophobia shit. But it is nicely sculpted. That's all I can really say about Kamatakun here. He's nicely sculpted. However, that's where my praise ends because the posability leaves a lot to be desired. Ball done at the head, jaw, neck, torso, these little stubs, legs, barely their knee, feet, and the tail is a series of bu- Oh. This part of the tail is incredibly loose and pops off when handled incorrectly. Despite all the ball joints, I can't really get him into any dynamic poses, can't even replicate his most iconic scene. He doesn't hunch low enough because his tail weighs him down at the back. I feel like there should have been a hinge here at the base so he could prop himself more forward, but oh well, that's all you get. For size comparison, here's Nandroid Justice the Awesome Demon. Magic coming. Square's Optimus Prime, uh, hey. and the Hammond Collectibles Carnotaurus. I'll give Kamarakun a 1.5 out of 5 here. He's not the most fun to handle, and the articulation is really limited, but at least he looks wow. nice. Now let's let Kamatakun evolve here so that we can move on with the review. Shinagawa-kun is Godzilla's third form in the movie. After going through what looks like an agonizing transformation, he grows some arms and some stronger legs to walk upright, and he just grows bigger entirely. SH Monster Arts really took advantage of the extra real estate now that he's bigger. The trypophobia inducing thighs are even more disgusting, the dorsal plates are more pronounced, and he looks like he's in even more pain. However, I'm not a big fan of the color they used here. In the movie, Shinagawa-kun was more red as opposed to the brown color they used for this figure. But despite that, I still think that this is superior to Kamatakun. He's bigger, more detailed, and more poseable. Speaking of which, let's get into it. Ball joints at the top of the head, jaw, neck, lower neck, oh for fuck's sake. The lower neck keeps popping off on my copy which is pretty annoying. Ball joints at the upper and lower body, allowing for some serious ab crunch. The tiny arms are also on ball joints. So are the legs which allow a 360, knees that are barely there, feet. And finally, a poseable tail with 11 points of articulation. You can get some really natural. Are all SH Monster Arts toys this annoying to handle? Articulation here is good. Unlike Kamarakun, Shinagawa-kun can replicate almost every scene he has in the movie. However, it is not the most fun to do so with the neck and tail pieces coming off so easily. As for size comparisons, Justice, hey, hey. Prime, 
Shinagawa. Carnotaurus Rawr. and his little brother. I give Shinagawa Kun here a 1.7 out of 5. He's a bit of a stinker, but he's better than his little brother. It's a shame, he really suffers from the joints popping off. Now in the movie, Shinagawa Kun overheats and then runs away to cool off in the ocean. I actually want to bring up that there's this deleted scene where he vomits boiling blood that melts everything in its path before he fucks off. That's pretty freaky. Anyway, let's toss him into a body of water and nuke him so we can get to the last SH Monster Rides figure. Shit! Kamakura-san is the fourth and most iconic form from the movie. And I must say, he looks downright horrifying, in a good way. SH Monster Arts almost perfectly captures the cancerous and scabby look that Godzilla had in the film. All the bumps, veins, and textures are sculpted perfectly. Hell, I'm even noticing more details here than I did in the movie again. Look at these extra toes growing on his feet. It's disgusting, but I appreciate it. Now I did say earlier that SH Monster Arts almost perfectly captures his look in the film. That's because this figure falls off in the painting, at least the front of it. It could've used more red to highlight the sculpting and really make him look like that bloody radioactive tumor that he was in the movie. The back, however, beautifully painted. I absolutely love how the back looks here. The dorsal plates look fantastic. They are quite sharp though, so handle with care. The exposed wounds have this shiny material similar to what people use in water dioramas, making them look disgustingly fresh. This material is also used inside the mouth, and holy Jesus mother of fuck, somebody call a dentist. And just look at that abnormally long tail, it's beautifully painted. I think this is one of the longest tails that Godzilla has ever had. Which for Shin Godzilla makes sense because it's got a low- OH MY FUCKING- The horror doesn't stop with this guy, huh? If you didn't know, the tail is its own organism, which explains this cretin. Now with this guy being the biggest of the bunch, you'd expect him to have the best posability, right? Well yeah, you're right. Again, all the joints here are ball jointed, the head, mouth, Neck, lower neck, the arms, wrists, he has an insane ab crunch which reveals some grotesque detail at the back, the legs have some decent range, knee bends, and check that out, this piece moves along with it, pretty cool. The ankle tilts a decent amount, and of course that massive tail that's got at least 15 points of articulation that I can count, allowing for some very organic looking poses that the tail can surprisingly hold. <sighs> Gotta be careful because the tail can still pop off. Not as annoying as the previous two though. All that fantastic articulation combined allow you to put Kamakura-san here into some epic poses that the joints can hold pretty well. And of course you can replicate that iconic atomic breath scene using that ab crunch, opening his mouth wide, and using an atomic breath accessory that doesn't come with the figure. Bandai, what the hell? At this price? I was lucky to get it for a significantly lower price, but imagine buying it back then. I'm aware there's a variant of this figure that comes with an atomic breath part, but how about no? Why do I have to buy a separate version for an atomic breath part? Since when did toys have DLC? And on the topic of flaws with this figure, paint chipping. This guy gets a new paint chip whenever wind hits it the wrong way. Seriously, I don't even know where these come from, and they're appearing everywhere. When I said it needed more red, I didn't mean this. But overall, I'll give Kamakura-san a 3 out of 5. He looks very good, he's very poseable, but man, that tail popping off, the lack of accessories, and the paint chipping really take away from the experience. Almost forgot. Yo. Justice, Prime, Carnotaur, and the Little Brother. <laughs> While Shin Godzilla isn't my favorite Godzilla movie, it is my favorite Godzilla design. A bumbling, mindless, immortal natural disaster who doesn't understand what's happening to itself. I think this interpretation deserves better. I guess, it's quite thematic in a way. Whoever handles Shin Godzilla's toys suffers as he does. Okay, now let's review an actually good Godzilla toy. The Haya Toys exquisite basic Godzilla from the Godzilla X Kong The New Empire movie is a figure of a legendary Godzilla. Unlike the thought-provoking Shin Godzilla, the legendary movies are best enjoyed with your brain turned off. They're great fun and full of kaijus beating the ever-living shit out of each other. This figure is a representation of Godzilla in that movie before he lost weight. What's with America in making Godzilla skinny? Anyway, this figure looks fantastic. All the details are so finely sculpted, especially that head, which captures that maniacal smile that he had. It's like I have a CGI model right in front of me. You'd think that something of this quality would cost as much as an SH Monster Arts figure, but no. It's like a quarter of what SH Monster Arts usually sells. So it's cheaper. So it must be made out of cheap material, right?
So me throwing it at my phone chipped it. Whoops. As you just saw, this guy can take some really serious punishment. And he doesn't even have a single paint chip, really top quality materials here. And of course, with all that durability, you won't have any issues posing this guy. So let's just get this thing off here and uh, assess the damage. That's a lot of damage. Anyway, like the SH monster arts, ball joints make up the majority of the articulation here. The head and the neck are a series of ball joints, and just look at the movement here. They all look natural thanks to how these rubber pieces are sculpted, and how they move along with the joints. Up, down, mouth can open, tongue, ball joint at the shoulder allowing for some good range, elbow swivel, elbow hinge joint that goes about 90 degrees, wrist ball joint, waist rotation, very slight ab crunch, and a very slight arcing back. Leg can do a full 360. Knee has a one position ratchet joint. And the calf, I'm not sure if it's a rotation or it's the sculpting being soft. You be the judge. Foot has about this much range. And finally the tail, which has 9 points of articulation, allowing for some nice, curvy, and natural looking poses. Posability here is amazing. He can hold almost every pose I've put him in. I mean, look at this pose. There's no supports here. That's the figure on its own. And unlike the SH Monster Arts figures, all of his joints stay together. Not once during filming did anything pop off, which is what I want from a figure that's supposed to represent a gigantic armored kaiju that shoots lasers. Speaking of lasers, he doesn't have an atomic breath accessory. And now the last size comparison of this video. Rad. Justice, Prime, Boobies. Carnotaurus, four children and today. finally the Shin Godzilla. The Haya Toys Godzilla is a fantastic and affordable piece that I highly recommend, even if you have just a passing interest in Godzilla. It's that good. 4 out of 5. Truly the king of the monsters. I look forward to Hayatoys' future products. Their Muto looks fantastic, and they're even making a Heisei Godzilla. So Hayatoys, if you're listening, please make a Shin Godzilla. This miserable abomination doesn't have any good representation in toy form. So please, make one. And one last thing, while it doesn't bother me, I do wish that these kaiju figures were bigger. It doesn't feel right having Godzilla be smaller than Optimus here. So allow me to show you how big I'd like these things to be. Now this is a properly sized Godzilla figure. This is Toy Maker's 3D printed Atomic Dragon. Totally not Mecha Godzilla. And would you believe me if I said that I printed this smaller than it should be? That's right. This gets bigger. I printed it smaller because it wouldn't fit on my shelf otherwise. Now imagine companies start making them this big. I would have to file for bankruptcy. But anyway, let me know if you want me to review this thing. And that's all. Thank you guys so much for sticking to the very end. I'll see you guys again in the next video. Whenever that'll be. Yeah. <laughs>